Today, we are going to talk about one of the most important names in modern physics, a name you've definitely heard, but you might not know the incredible story behind the man. So let me ask you a question. You've heard of the Higgs boson, right? The famous God particle. Its discovery won a Nobel Prize. But what if I told you the man whose name is literally in the word boson never won one himself? It's a huge paradox, and it gets right to the heart of our story today. So who was this guy? His name was Satindranath Bose. And yes, you guessed it, he is the Bose in Boson. That's not just a coincidence. That single word connects him to an entire class of particles that make up our universe. And it kicks off an amazing story of genius, guts, and a legacy that literally changed how we see reality. To really get how he did it, we've got to go back to the beginning. We're talking the turn of the 20th century in colonial India, where a brilliant young mind was about to emerge against all odds. Satyendra Nath Bose was born in Calcutta back in 1894. His dad was an accounts clerk, you know, a man who lived by precision. And that love for numbers, it was definitely passed down. From the very beginning, Bose wasn't just good at math. He spoke it fluently, like it was the language of the universe. And when he got into the super demanding Hindu school, his talent didn't just shine, it, well, it exploded. I mean, there's this legendary story about his math teacher, right? He was so blown away by Bose's mind that he once gave him a grade of 110 out of 100 on a test. You're probably thinking, how is that even possible? Well, it's because Bose hadn't just gotten all the answers right. He'd solved many of the problems in multiple, totally original ways that even the teacher hadn't thought of. That tells you everything you need to know about how this guy's brain was wired. All right, now we get to the moment that changed absolutely everything. This is a story about a massive intellectual gamble, a moment born out of frustration that led to one of the most important letters in the entire history of science. Okay, so picture this. It's 1924. Bose is a lecturer, and he's wrestling with a big problem in quantum theory. And then, bam, he has a breakthrough, a totally new, super elegant way to derive a fundamental law of physics. So he writes it all up, sends it off to a top British journal, and then, crickets. The silence was just deafening. Facing rejection from the scientific establishment, a lot of people would have just given up, but not Bose. He did something incredibly bold. He decided, you know what? I'm going straight to the top. He mailed his paper directly to the most famous scientist on Earth, Albert Einstein. And just listen to the tone of this letter. It's so humble. He calls himself a pupil, but at the same time, he is completely confident in his work. He's not asking for a favor. He's asking a peer to recognize a fundamental truth he's uncovered. The sheer nerve of it is just incredible. And Einstein's reply? Wow. It came back on a simple postcard, and it was immediate and electric. He didn't just like it, he got it. Instantly. He personally translated Bose's paper into German and got it published with his own stamp of approval. Can you just imagine that moment? Getting a postcard from Einstein that doesn't just get your paper published, it kicks the door wide open to a whole new era of physics. So, what was this revolutionary idea? What was in that paper that got Einstein so excited? Well, it was something that would end up giving a name to half, literally half, of the fundamental particles in the universe. Bose basically came up with a whole new way to count quantum particles. See, before him, everyone treated these particles like they were tiny individual billiard balls. Bose's radical idea was that certain particles, like photons of light, are fundamentally indistinguishable. You just can't tell one from another. This seemingly simple idea became the absolute foundation of what we now call Bose-Einstein statistics. And this idea basically split the universe of particles into two giant families. On one side, you have fermions. Think of them as the loner particles. These make up all the matter we see, electrons, protons, and they have a strict rule, only one per seat. No two can be in the same state at the same time. But on the other side, you've got the bosons, these social particles. They follow Bose rules. They love to party and can all pile into the very same quantum state. These are the force carriers of nature, like photons for light, and yep, the Higgs boson itself. But here's the thing, Bose's story is so much bigger than just this one world-changing discovery. The man who gave us the Bose was also a passionate teacher, a patriot, and, well, a true Renaissance man. 
He wasn't some theorist just locked away in an office. No way. He was a beloved professor who was always pushing his students to question everything. He was a patriot who believed that science should be for everyone, so he pushed to have it taught in his native language, Bengali. And on top of all that, he was a man of culture, a talented musician who played a stringed instrument called the Esraj. And through all the fame and recognition, he stayed so incredibly humble. He once just said, I have got my due. Nothing more, nothing less. Which brings us to the final and maybe the most fascinating twist in his story. We're talking about a legacy that is, without a doubt, Nobel-worthy, even though he never actually got the prize. So get this. It's a fact that still shocks people today. Satyendranath Bose was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physics not once, not twice, but four separate times. And yet, that call from Stockholm? It never came. It remains one of the great what-ifs in the history of science. But really, his true legacy was never about a medal. The true impact of his work is just staggering. Look at this. That one little paper from 1924 set off an incredible chain reaction. Decades later, his ideas led scientists to create a whole new state of matter, the Bose-Einstein condensate, that won a Nobel in 2001. Then, of course, the discovery of the Higgs boson, another Nobel in 2013. Two Nobel Prizes, both standing squarely on the foundation that S.N. Bose built almost a century earlier. His story shows you that real impact isn't always measured in prizes. Sometimes, it's measured in the generations of discovery that come after you. It's a powerful reminder that genius can come from anywhere, often from the quiet corners we overlook, which kind of leaves us with one last big thought. What quiet genius, somewhere out there right now, is writing the letter that's going to change our world? 